Greetings, friends. Welcome to today's devotion, Psalm 144. Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hand for war and my fingers for battle, my rock and my fortress, my stronghold and my deliverer, my shield in whom I take refuge, who subdues the peoples under me. O Lord, what are human beings that you regard them, or mortals that you think of them? They are like a breath. Their days are like a passing shadow. Bow your heavens, O Lord, and come down. Touch the mountains so that they smoke. Make the lightning flash and scatter them. Send out your arrows and rout them. Stretch out your hand from on high. Set me free and rescue me from the mighty waters, from the hand of aliens, whose mouths speak lies and whose right hands are false. I will sing a new song to you, O God, upon a ten-stringed harp. I will play to you. The one who gives victory to kings, who rescues his servant David. Rescue me from the cruel sword and deliver me from the hand of aliens, whose mouths speak lies and whose right hands are false. May our sons and their youth be like plants full grown, our daughters like corner pillars cut for the building of a palace. May our barns be filled with produce of every kind. May our sheep increase by thousands, by tens of thousands in our fields. And may our cattle be heavy with young. May there be no breach in the walls, no exile, and no cry of distress in our streets. Happy are the people to whom such blessings fall. Happy are the people whose God is the Lord. So this is what's categorized as a royal psalm, uh, primarily because of the reference to David, and it is written from the perspective of a king. And it may also be something that was spoken uh, when a new king was anointed, um, but again, as we are getting to the end of the Psalms, these are refrains and themes that are repeated over and over again uh, with slightly different uh, versions and focuses on a particular occurrence or event that's taking place or had taken place. And uh, the psalmist, in this case attributed to David, is crying out to God, praying to God, um, first recognizing uh, who God is, how God has helped and provided for him. Um, making reference to the fact in verse 3 and 4 that, you know, who, how is it that God, Almighty God, pays attention to mere mortals like us? Uh, compared to an eternal God, our lifespan is like a breath or a passing shadow. And then recounting God's power in creation, power over <clears throat> creation, and then, of course, the standard um, call to rescue from one's enemies. And... Um, and then praying towards the end, something a little bit different of praying for the prosperity and the blessings of God in the form of, of livestock and um, crops that are bountiful and fruitful, uh, which is not unusual either, um, which is sort of standing out for me in particular in this point, uh, is just the utter dependence that, that the people of Israel had on God and recognizing how amazing and awesome God was um, and also how blessed they were, and then wanting to praise and worship God because of that. But the utter dependence on God for everything that they wanted, needed to survive, whatever it might be, uh, in this case with livestock, but also protection from enemies, um, children, many children, everything that they thought of, everything that they need, was uh, God was the source of all of it. And this is uh, sort of... Um, common in the in the as a customs of this age that every person was religious as i've said a number of times every person had gods that they prayed to and worshiped for everything in their life there was a reason and a cause and a greater um, being behind everything that happened in the world there was no coincidences there were no happenstances there was no things that happened just by chance it was all dependent on gods and of course the people of israel rather than uh, they were no different than the rest of the folks but other rather than praying to many gods they prayed to the one true God who is in control of all things, weather, crops, um, sun, moon, stars, children, everything. Um, and in some ways, it was a probably problematic for them in some ways because if things didn't go as they had prayed for, the feeling was that God didn't hear their prayers or they didn't that God didn't care enough to answer their prayers. That was also the way of thinking for ancient people. So on the one hand, complete and utter dependence on God is a marvelous thing. 
something that we can emulate. But what we have, what we don't have uh, as a dynamic of that is the burden of thinking of um, how much God loves us based on how well our life is going, uh, how prayers are answered or not answered, that we know and we trust because of Jesus Christ, that God's love for us is all-encompassing. And it isn't, it isn't a matter of, of transactions that we pray God gives us if he's happy with us at that particular moment in time in our lives. We need no, we need no greater proof than to look at the cross to know how deep and how wide uh, and how intense God's love is for us. Um, but the total dependence on God in that is trusting that if the prayers that we ask for, the things in our lives that aren't going as we wish, that there is reason behind it. It's not as if God is doing it, but... Um, we can trust that God is present in the midst of all of it and, and that we do get what we need. We do have, of course, eternal salvation and God's presence and the Spirit and so many other things that are permanent, uh, permanent part of the blessings of our lives. And in some ways that can and might be sufficient for us, even in the midst of difficulties and trials. It's hard for us to get our heads around that because of the world we live in. But the truth is, we are uh, closer to God, and God is closer to us than any person of Israel in Israel ever could have been. We are blessed beyond measure in that capacity and in that way, uh, because we know how much God loves us, and it's not dependent on the things that we get or how our prayers are answered. So there's comfort in that, there's peace in that, there's joy in that, and there's always hope in that as well. That's our devotion for today, tomorrow, Psalm 145. Until then... Be well.